Kenneth Investor channel and I welcome all the loyal subscribers to the channel and all the patrons to the highly on content that we put out on a weekly basis. I think it's important to uh, continue to help support these um, new and emerging companies that uh, are really trying to make a big, big impact. In Hylion's case, the Class 8 space, uh, they provide electrified powertrain solutions to the Class 8 market. Um, they have relationships established with um, many of the uh, larger OEMs. They are OEM agnostic, looking to come public here through their relationship with PACAR. If you are new to the Hylion uh, introduction, um, you are not alone. There is a very specific reason as to why I put this content out as frequently as I do. I think that there is an awareness problem with this company. Uh, I think the people who have probably known about it um, have maybe even known about it, watched it go up very, very quickly and then fall from grace, uh, either as an observer or an investor and have moved on from the name and or uh, there are uh, people who need to understand what the company is looking to do, uh, what type of market they're looking to penetrate, and what technology they bring to bear. Very interesting. I've been following the story now for about three years. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Ryan. I'm a value investor in, in the stock market in multiple capacities. Um, I come out with videos on the Independent Investor Channel to provide really awareness to those different avenues or swim lanes that can apply to the masses. Now, the way that I invest in the market will not apply to you, okay? I do provide those ideas that can help all investors get um, seek out and, and receive some exposure to the stock market in the capacity that they deem necessary in their own specific application. Hylion falls into what I would consider to be one of those speculative categories. All right. The overarching theme here in investing in Hylion is that we are investing in a theme of uh, global awareness, uh, pollution reduction, and earmarking those specific industries that over the last hundred years, let's just call it, have built up very established, in a lot of cases, blue chip businesses, and have done so uh, at, the, at the expense of the environment. And companies like Hylion are really trying to advance the technology that are existing today with regard to the battery technology e-axle application and in response to some of the mandates that will be coming on the line here shortly. Larger companies are twofold looking at this issue. Uh, the question remains, why don't they just stay with diesel? The customers of these fleets are demanding that the logistics space uh, trucking in general, take a hard look at how it is that we are delivering upon our promise to transport goods from point A to point B, but also looking at the opportunity uh, through cost savings, if possible, and the possibility of reducing our reliance on diesel. Diesel fuel has been the dominant fuel choice over the last hundred years in the space and companies like Hylion are looking to augment the logistics space by bringing their multiple solutions to bear in many different capacities to help with the advancement in both uh, renewable natural gas, uh, advancements in compressed natural gas applications, uh, advancements in hydrogen fuel cell, uh, as well as some hybrid offerings that help uh, augment existing applications in the Class 8 space. And finally, uh, some real novel technology. Um, some may argue that it's not. There's some scuttlebutt going on right now that, of course, the Carnot generator, which Hylion has acquired from General Electric, is somehow dead on arrival. Um, I don't agree with that. I, I think my eyes are wide open 
if I were to sit next to the freeway for an hour, 60 minutes, 100% of the trucks that I would observe go by the highway are right now powered by diesel. So we can split hairs on what, who, and and how this technology is going to f- unfold. We can argue tooth and nail about who has the best technology or what technology is going to win out or what technology won't win out and why. I think those conversations now are somewhat futile and they're frustrating now because even in the example of Tesla and and Nikola, uh, those, those technologies, especially in the case of Nikola that has had a very recessed stock price over the last, I would say, year, it's really been on a, a, a real real aggressive downward trajectory will probably end up in the end at the end of the day contributing to the technological advances that may actually see hydrogen fuel cell um, in in reality and change that physical observation that I that I pose to the group here in understanding that right now, things are not moving at all. There are, there is zero penetration. There's a few test cases. There's a few um, operations going out in Southern California uh, that, uh, that I I believe Nicola is uh, the point on, uh, which is great. Those advancements need to find their place and they need to find their place in the specific routes where those applications actually fit. Okay. But the 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 investment in Hylion specifically, and just for full transparency, I'm I'm not an investor specifically in Tesla. I'm not an investment specifically in Nikola outside of some long call contracts that are looking like they'll dissolve away and 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 not materialize um, into anything. Lucky me. I am a large shareholder from a retail perspective in Hylion. I've currently rounded out my share position, went on some heavy buying on this last swoon in the stock price, which I felt like was exacerbated to the downside, uh, accelerated by a short uh, interest in the company uh, to continue to short the stock uh, for continued profit in what I feel like is a perceived lack of weakness on behalf of highly on not garnering really a whole lot of orders in 2023 to build against their backlog uh, of of orders i don't chalk that up to be anything other than just uh, a waiting game now awaiting certification etc before they can start to fortify that order book and start to build against that order queue okay um, but my highly on position has been built up right now. Last count to 17,500. I've smartly accumulated shares, especially over the last couple of months that seen the stock in this downtrend um, in the face of buying a stock that uh, looked like it was inevitably, inevitably going to zero. Uh, the only solace I could take in watching the stock action every single day is to know that highly on uh, was guaranteed not to go below zero and start to um, take money uh, from shareholders who own the stock, uh, that own the stock at a negative integer. Um, So that was the only comfort that I had. Um, This last week, coming off of the ACT 23 Expo, I thought probably churned up about the best and most quality churn and momentum for Hylion that I've seen in three years. You can you can accuse me of being a fanboy if you'd like. Um, that's pretty typical through social media. Um, I am a social media content creator. However, most of the um, real feeling I get and why I do this channel I don't typically enjoy social media very much at all. Um, However, (laughs) I do insist on having a voice. And contrary to many of the opinions, the isolated opinions that I'll come across on social media, uh, I just disagree wholeheartedly with how people apply their investing thesis, 
how they justify and look for validation in sources that uh, through sources that I don't think uh, will provide you the justification enough to allow you a sound decision um, in, insofar as you're making those decisions based on others and not yourself. It's really just that simple. So my intent is to provide education from my perspective and then allow you to engage on your own uh, deep dive, come to your own thesis. I know there's a lot of people who have. They've come to their thesis on Hylion and they would suggest that Hylion is complete with their sales and they'll never garner another sales going forward. We we will see. Um, if, if there is a game of cat and mouse going on right now with a CEO that seemed nothing short of confident in his delivery, in understanding the niche in the class eight space that they're looking to provide a niche, not a complete takeover, a niche. They are looking to provide powertrains to the, the the grander class eight solution. Now with the digression in the stock price and the reduction in the cap of the company, the market cap of Hylion, are they, are they or could they be a takeover uh, target? Yeah, I'm, I absolutely believe they could. Are those discussions happening now? We don't know. Um, am I being presumptuous that perhaps maybe a takeover opportunity is is out there? Yes. Yes, I do. Because the impression that I get from Hylion is that they want to advance this technology themselves with their existing relationships. And as a share owner, uh, I would like to see that happen because it's going to be more lucrative for me to have had myself and this community that we have built up over the last couple of years that have been privy to have invested in and have believed in the story uh, to see it come to some level of niche penetration in the class eight space and for most of the bulls in the company we understand that we don't need to have a, a, a 10 percent penetration in the in the just over one trillion dollar class eight market the amount of trucks that are being purchased every single year uh, provide plenty of room for most of these technologies if, in fact, they can bring a technology uh, that can be brought to bear that is not a laughing stock, that, that can actually provide some real tangible benefits to the fleets. And I believe Hylion has that. It speaks to my conviction about um, my position and my position allies with the fact that Hylion has taken a different approach to transporting goods from point A to point B. And I, I want you to think about that for a moment. I, I talked at the top of this offering about tit for tat with different technologies out there. Nikola has the best. Tesla has, you know, the 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 uh, name brand and recognition right now. It doesn't matter if their trucks are breaking down all over the place and Pepsi's having to haul them back in this uh, experiment that they've got going on on behalf of of Tesla. I don't think it really matters to go tit for tat so much with who has the best technology. I think you need to look below the hood. Uh, no pun intended there. And what these companies are boasting with regard to their ranges um, and their torque and their power and their uh, opportunity to drive TCO over the long term, okay? And I think Hylion, unfortunately, has been caught up in this idea that they have been dubbed an RNG, CNG company from the beginning, and rightfully so. They have professed that their RNG <clears throat> renewable natural gas uh, hypertruck uh, extended range vehicle um, would be their flagship product. And I think if there was any criticism that I would put over the um, the ACT Expo is that I thought most of the focus was on the Carno. And this could be me reading into it a little bit uh, further, um, but perhaps not. Perhaps a discussion point is to suggest that Look, uh, we, we've been investing in the company for three years, uh, and three years ago, we nary heard the word Carno even introduced, and now it's the dominant 
um, portion of the discussion. Am I excited about it? I am. If they can start to generate some revenue out of any of these verticals that they seemingly are very, very good at introducing and generating hype over. But when it comes to the bottom line, my question and the scary question is, who is going to buy this? Where are they going to be placed? What competition is going to be uh, out there to head off the progress of Hylion looking to specifically penetrate the stationary power generating market? Okay. It's great to talk about these things and show a neon green slide and show banks of Carno generators that are generating all of this power at seven cents per kilowatt hour. <clears throat> but when you look at the below the surface, my question is very, very simple. How are you going to generate revenue from it? And it's been the same question for the hybrid. It's been the same question for uh, the now uh, Hypertruck ERX. And their uh, new partnership just announced on the last quarterly call to close out the year's end 2022 on partnering with Hyzon Motors to accelerate their hydrogen fuel cell opportunity, which actually I'm quite bullish on. I'm I'm not uh, so scathing on Hyzon as some people are. Um, I understand that they've got a pretty recessed stock price, but again, if I look at the company and their international reach, I, I think Hyzon could be a sleeping monster if these two can collaborate their efforts and really offer the fleets a, a multi-tiered uh, approach to what it is is going to fulfill their need route specific, them being the fleets, the logistic fleets themselves, when they go and they, they, they offer the opportunity to potentially start to augment these fleets with this new technology. Now, if the new technology is introduced and it ends up falling on its face, so be it. Okay, I'd like to see Hylion given the chance with all of this certification and rigor, um, which we are in an uncomfortable time for me right now, having not heard any progress at all on certification. Uh, I would expect that the earnings call that's coming up here in a couple of days this week, uh, Hylion will roll out its Q1 earnings uh, for 2023, and I'm, I'm probably in the same camp that I've been in for the previous four quarters. However, coming out of this week, I feel a glimmer of hope. And just bear with me for just just a moment. And and I I want to paint a picture for all of the share owners in this company that have believed since the beginning they have the relationships, they have the product. They have the ability to really set themselves on a par with diesel, uh, if not to drive a better TCO um, on, on the long, uh, not necessarily on the onset. But there was an announcement that Thomas Healy shared with the group during the ACT Expo that's actually going to further help accelerate that incentive. Um, and and and, uh, and and incentive to the fleets directly. <clears throat> that was a big announcement that I think nobody's talking about, and I think it's unfortunate. But hey, the fleets that are looking to uncover these um, these different technologies and maybe look to to make these leaps of faith with these companies are doing that now. So they are absolutely crunching the numbers and moving from a seventy five percent credit a ZEV credit to now a hundred percent ZEV credit, I thought was a fantastic deal. I, I believe that was under the ACF mandates. I believe if I'm, my memory serves me correctly. In either case, it moves highly on in a category to really allow for the maximum uh, incentive for fleets to, to partner with highly on. Now, a partnership with Hylion doesn't necessarily mean that they're engaging in a new OEM relationship. And that's why I think the bridge to success for Hylion is a little bit softer. Um, the, the learning curve is going to be a little bit flatter for them as opposed to a Nikola who has basically built their product from the ground up, warehouse OEM, uh, strategic partnerships with parts and suppliers, et cetera, et cetera where I think the risk to reward 
is probably much greater for Nikola. Um, unfortunately, I just think they've bit off more than they can chew. But and and I think it, I think they're going to suffer. I mean, they've diluted now. I think they've pushed their share float up to the maximum of, of 1.6 billion shares. Comparatively speaking, with Hylion at just around 180 million shares of float, it just doesn't equate to me um, how this isn't being talked about. Hylion is in a position of strength with with their cash. There was a little bit of scuttlebutt on my live stream on Friday where we talked about Hylion exclusively, where the bear case is that they're burning cash. Of course, they're burning cash. Um, that is the name of the game right now. They're not in a phase where they can look at the 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 uh, the business and and the cash that's being generated on the top end and and expect that it's anywhere near close to what they need for their operating expenditures as a business. That's to be expected. It's almost like making kind of an obvious point and using that um, against the company. Again, on a company like like this, in its uh, infancy, if, if those are the type of metrics you want to apply, uh, albeit Ill, Ill applied, in my opinion, to a company like this, then, then that's your prerogative to do that. That's totally fine. But for 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 comp for a company like Hylion that has the lean business model, which I again we we've talked about over the last couple of years, but I think people truly miss what they're actually purchasing when they purchase a stock that's up close to thirty percent over the last week with the momentum that they're buying into a business that companies aren't necessarily going into business with Hylion. A hundred percent. Let's just put an arbitrary figure of 40% of the truck is owned by Hylion. The The rest of the sourced material and 40% might be a little bit high, to be honest with you. Let's just drop it down to a quarter of the truck with regard to its technology. The engine is not Hylion's, uh, the powertrain um, the e-axle is not Hylion's. Um, that is Cummins, and Cummins is is assisting with this. The source of supply uh, that Packard has, uh, both Peterbilt and Kenworth. Uh, excuse me, not Ken. Is it Kenworth or Freightliner? I believe it's. I believe it's Freightliner. Is it Kenworth? I'm drawing a blank. I believe it's Kenworth actually. But to be able to source their supply from Packard companies and their transition to a greener opportunity um, and one that applies under and meets the conditions of the ACT, it, the, the gap that's needed to be bridged by partnering with a company like, like Hylion is really not that big. They're buying basically a conventional truck that has been reimagined in all the right places and not reimagined in the rest of the places. I speak specifically about the aesthetics of the truck. Um, the driver experience has actually improved. The hoteling has actually improved. Uh, the onboard diagnostics package, that's something that does not get talked about at all. And certainly as part of my bullish thesis, when I purchase shares in the company that I'm buying into that cloud computing and analytical opportunity that Hylion has from a subscription base in the service that they can provide to their fleets in um, monitoring the performance and allowing some predictive maintenance and analytics. I just think that's enormous. Um, I think that's where kind of the AI perspective is going. I, I think if you're going to make a few hundred thousand dollar investment into a tractor, why not put those uh, additional monitorings on that to make sure that you get the maximum life? It just makes sense to me from a business perspective. I'm not a logistics guy and I'm not a trucking guy, but it just makes sense to me that a company like Hylion would be dubbed a company that actually knows more about the trucks than the companies themselves. And that's a pretty bold statement, but I think there's a marketing opportunity there. And I think there's a real business opportunity for Hylion to exploit with regard to their subscription-based business. I think it's going to be fun to see them uh, step that up. I think it's going to be fun to help them 
to watch them fortify that piece of the truck that they do own. And then go ahead and just segue the rest of that business to the OEMs have, who have been doing this for a long, long time. So the stars are aligning. They're aligning slow. Um, I think they're aligning slower than I would expect them to align. But what does that mean? Um, th that really doesn't mean anything with regard to how fast Hylion is actually moving in response to what the industry can accept at this current juncture. So when I share those conjectures with you, I, I want you to try to separate my own personal opinion. Look, I'd like to see Hylion be selling a thousand units a month. Okay. Is that realistic tomorrow? Is it realistic next week? Is it realistic next month or next year? Well, as the company evolves, it should become more realistic. But expecting that now, based on the performance over the last couple of years and the trajectory and the speed at which they've been able to move on this project, it's it's highly unlikely to expect that Hylion is going to um, advance their technology uh, faster or slower than what is expected. Um, the pace at which Hylion is going to roll out this technology is going to be measured. Um, it's going to be smart. Um, we are awaiting the results of the certification to come back, and we'll just have to be uh, patiently surprised as those developments are rolled out. All right. So the big theme of the ACT con uh, uh, Expo wrap-up that I want to offer for you guys, obviously, Carno Technology, and a big shout-out to Josh Mook, who's the lead engineer on the Carno Technology. Um, he was very, very helpful, very ecstatic about being the lead on the project and also being a, a highly on uh, employee. Um, Josh is part of the Discord group, which is actually surprising uh, and actually... Uh, somewhat satisfying to know that they are in there and they're taking a vested interest in what the conversations would garner amongst mostly retail communities where the discord group is um is uh, uh is frequenting so if you're not part of that uh, go ahead and join that the 3d printing demonstration and the capabilities of the parts that cannot be produced to um, allow the Carno to operate the way that it is intended to operate was on display there. I thought that that was pretty awesome. Um, the Carno ERX for me was one of the three big game changers uh, this year. The announcement, I was not expecting that. Um, it was a very sharp truck. Um, if if this thing actually works the way that they expect it to work, I, I'm like, hey, I'm a show me guy. I'm I'm not going to buy into hype a, at all here. But um, whether or not they're taking this concept too far with without really understanding if there's even a demand uh, in the marketplace for this, I, I mean, I, I've got some real skepticisms. I, I'm more interested in the stationary. That seems more achievable now in aligning with where the current is taking this current uh, this opportunity with BEV it seems like the politicians have already dubbed BEV as being the king and they don't even understand that they don't have the power to be able to uh to to supplement these i think it's a politically wonderful idea for politicians to continue to get reelected to talk about their undying love for BEV when there's a lot of skeptics out there that are questioning a lot of different things, not only safety, but the reality that we just don't have the ability to charge these trucks. So I think the stationary market for Hylion is attractive. I, I, I just, again, go back to this idea of if we build the Carno, are we not rendering the RNG ERX obsolete, which some of the internal sabotage that I've already seen with Hylion makes me suggest that they're just engaging in this full force in this science project on a massive scale and hoping that the science project lands on a market that's going to accept it and is going to find a place for it. And my friends, it's like drilling for gold, okay? It's like prospecting for gold without drilling for gold, okay? And... It makes me nervous a little bit to have this cash burn working so heavily against not only the support of the company, 
and the op and capex that highly unholds, but also these indefinite ends and strings of projects that look, they just need to identify one. I jokingly said about six months ago, why don't you sell hats and t-shirts to people and start to generate some income? Because if they're going to continually pursue these verticals and not see them to an end, if Hylion is so naive to think that they're just going to be able to inevitably spend to the moon without asking the scary questions of whether or not there's even a market for the Carnot generator, I mean, really, what incentive do the fleets have? What are the bottom line metrics that are going to be driven by the Carno, as opposed to the, the 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 diesel that's being driven right now? We know that's going on. And what incentive are they going to have to go Carno as opposed to hydrogen fuel cell? What incentive are they going to have to opt for the Carno, the hydrogen fuel cell, uh, and or? What incentive would there be there to go ahead and opt for RNG? And I, I think it's, in my mind, I have a very, very detailed answer to my own rhetorical question, but these are the types of deliberations that I go through in understanding that Hylion is looking to come with verticals that can satisfy multiple routes in this country and abroad, right? I think the idea of sitting across the table from industry, at least this is my interpretation of what They've got the opportunity to do, again, with the caveat to understand that if industry is receptive to the idea that they could sit down and say, hydrogen fuel cell is not going to work for this route. Diesel is not going to work for this route. The EX is not going to work for this route. But hey, the RNG ERX works perfectly fine for this route. Or vice versa. Hey, we've got a little bit of exploratory on this route here. It's a very established route. It's one that we feel comfortable with putting the rigor of new technology over. Maybe the Carno generator or the Carno ERX is better for that application. And we can start to, to garner the renderings from those learnings off of that route for that specific application. Now, that's what I think Hylion has the opportunity to do to sit down with industry and, and, and appeal to multiple routes, depending on what the route and the frequency of that route drives. Then once you look at the specifics of the right route, the miles driven, um, the rigor over the vehicle, that the, uh, the, the, the driver tendencies, you can take all that, package it up and really start to generate some metrics on how more, how much more efficient they can be, how much, uh, matching inefficiency they can be, or or even maybe that that route is better served by diesel. Guys, I don't know, right? Because there has to be an economic benefit to switching over from diesel, even in the face of reducing the diesel in that specific ap application for the good of the environment, right? So this whole project and this whole theme around moving toward a greener future in the class eight space, there are other industries working on this, but this niche is about the class eight trucks, uh, trucking and transportation and log logistics space. That is what we're talking about. And the question is, who better served to look at route specifics? I just, I look at, at Nikola, okay? They have Bell, they have BEV, full electric, and they have hydrogen fuel cell. If they sit down and they have those two options, and they can say, well, you've got this route. These are our two options. This is your route over here. These are your two options. This is your route over here. These are your two options. I think in any one of those cases, which Hylion does not have a full electric uh, uh, option, where they don't have that, they can actually augment the fleets in a way that Nikola can't with their BEV proposal to the industry. And that's why I think BEV is only suited for short haul at this particular juncture with the lack of infrastructure, with the lack of charging infrastructure. And I think the headwinds that's going to be met to actually establish all of this infrastructure, that the White House is just saying, we're just going to go ahead and build this stuff all over the country at any expense. I think they're missing the big picture. I really do. I don't think it's going to be as easy as everybody thinks that it's going to be. And I, I think bringing generating power along with you actually makes a hell of a lot more sense to me. Um, and, and I think a full comparison of the actual impact of going full electric 
And the loss, the loss of efficiency, the loss of torque, the loss of payload and capacity, and the additional waste that is going to be generated from those trucks um, on on the back end when those trucks have run them their service life, I don't think we fully grasp the impact of this whole go go be EV or nothing movement that I think politically has momentum, but I think in reality it falls dead on arrival when you start to look at the specifics of what's going on. I thought Thomas Healy was fantastic. I thought his energy was great. There was people on the floor that were talking about his engagement with. Uh, a lot of people, this convention was twice as big as the one last year, so we would expect that the exposure was twice as much. Whether or not that renders anything material is beyond me, okay? I'm very, very close to the vest as, uh, as, as it pertains to my presumptive attitude about Hylion. We are, and rightfully so, I have dubbed this to be kind of the quiet period for Hylion, and boy, oh boy, has it been. It has been an absolute ice age for large catalysts. I mean, you know, naming new directors to the board of directors just doesn't move the needle for me. Um, that's not exciting. Uh, it, it it shows that the company is focused on, yes, I would contend and maybe just offer up that it is an important aspect of the company, but not paramount right now to drive uh, bottom line uh, return on, on capital. And right now the return on capital is horrible. I mean, it is absolutely horrible. I think they're getting a return on capital of about $1 for every $37 spent with the company. It's absolutely atrocious right now with the money that is going out the door and the lack of money that is coming in. So, you know, these little tidbits of information are dropped on the community and it's kind of like, hey, it's a non-starter for me. Um, and and we've been lacking in some of those major catalysts. Um, the the team has fortified itself from 200 to 250. Um, you know, I, this team has to continue to grow. But as the team continues to grow and the operating expenditures continues to grow, we're going to have to at some point ask the scary questions on who is the target audience and who amongst the target audience is actually going to buy product. At the end of the day. That that is what we're after. We we can talk all day. We can get excited. We can do live streams. We can talk about how Hylion has the greatest solution out there under the sun. At the end of the day, it does not matter if they have went gold digging without actually doing the drilling and prospecting ahead of time. Okay, and and, and that for me, the verdict is still out. Whether or not that research is really truly understood by Hylion whether or not they've started this momentum on a on a on a voyage to nowhere <laughs> in other words are they looking to build this big badass product hoping it hits the mark someday i hope not i hope there's data and i hope there's statistics to show that this is not a speculative guess rather a foregone conclusion uh, that hylion will find a small niche in the class 8 space and if they find their small niche then they're fine um, if they can't find any niche whatsoever, which over the last six months of of, of Ice Age, it, it, it appears as if Hylion has not garnered any interest. Now, I, we don't know. We do not know. And until we're provided color on progress moving forward with any of their initiatives, I just think right now they've got multiple projects going and they're moving each and every one of them in small and incremental pieces. My fear is that they'll just burn up all their cash uh, having been moving all of these projects in a direction and not seeing any of them to an end. That's a real concern for me right now. Um, whether it's warranted or not, it, it may not be, guys, okay? I, I try to be as neutral and as less of a uh, of, of a critic based on presumption without that basis for my thesis to throw that out there and say, is anybody else concerned with this or is it just highly onto the moon and that's the way it's going to be and Ryan, stop worrying, you're being a baby about it. Um, no, I, I don't think so. I This thing came to public markets as a pre-revenue company. They have proven that they can generate some revenue immaterial at that, um, but they need to prove that they can generate some revenue. And it's just that simple. It is a prove it story. And guys, if, if highly on cannot generate revenue, we don't have a company anymore. We do not have a company without revenue. We do not have a company without revenue. It's that simple. Do they have the opportunity to 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 garner that revenue? 
I believe that they do, but I can believe everything under the sun. I can believe and project to a YouTube audience that I believe that that's going to happen. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to happen. And Hylion needs to prove in some short order that they are marching toward that end. And that's what I don't understand. I listen to the Q&A after every single call and not one of them talk about this, not one of them. They all come on and they congratulate Thomas Healy on the quarter. They congratulate the team. Great job. They talk about the advancements in the RNG, ERX, maybe throw out a Carno question to sound smart. And nobody ever really presses the way Elon Musk was, was pressed on the early days of Tesla. You remember some of those contentious calls? Those were unbelievable. It's always just like a kumbaya and let me throw this softball up there for Thomas Healy to hit out of the park and that's it. There's never really any press to suggest when when are we looking to actually maybe, I don't know, make some money with the company? Is that not a fair question? I think it's a fair question to ask. What type of metrics have you put around what type of and the number of units that need to be sold to actually turn turn back some revenues? Hell, I'm not even talking about profit because profits – are going to come when the margins start to expand. And we're not even near that discussion. Um, those original projections were talking about margins from 25 to 35%. And those cannot start to be materialized until they start to identify on a month over month sales basis, how many units they need to sell to actually cover the operating expenditures of their business. They don't have to turn a profit for years, guys. They don't have to turn a profit for years. They can continue to expand the company and not turn one dime of profit. But what they need to do is drive revenues enough to make sure that these dollars in this highly on project aren't going into a black hole to be lost forever. All right. The ride and drive was fantastic. The three attributes of the ride and drive were comfort, reliability, and torque. Excuse me. Reliability, which surprised me based on what I didn't, I didn't know. Torque, which was a surprise to me as well regenerative braking and there was a few others that were mentioned here um, on the driver's impression during the ride and drive comfort was mentioned i think that's something that's kind of overshadowed um, with regard to the driver comforts and in driving a vehicle that's silent that only has a generator that kicks on to charge the batteries it's worth mentioning here that the hylion um, uh, product was the only sleeper cab at the entire expo that's a bold statement. There was one additional that was a autonomous driving vehicle, and it was actually right next door, I believe, uh, through Peterbilt. Um, that was uh, the autonomous offering. Um, there was some discussion about the sales team being ready to ramp up sales and being uh, strategically placed all over the country. So that's of interest to me. And then finally, the 100% credit that was announced an increase over the 75% um, uh, ACF mandate credit that Hylion was originally um, um, eligible for at 75% has now been increased to 100. I think that's huge. I think any bump in the right direction, and I just want to close down the weekly live stream by saying this. If we cumulatively, and I posed this to the to the Shark Tank on the Friday live stream when we were talking about Hylion, are you satisfied with the progress of this company thus far? And I think if we look at these small advancements and their relationship with ACT and their relationships with their many industry partners, it, it's hard for me to imagine the, the, the nuclear option with Hylion, and that is that they cease to exist. All relationships sever. All the hyper trucks go into self-destruct mode and they all blow up and they all cease to exist. All of this progress toward the data that is being pulled off of these trucks, which is part of what you're investing in, is the, the gathering of that data. Every single quarter that goes by each of these verticals do kind of start to materialize in their value 
Okay. In other words, the value of Hylion now is significantly greater than it was last year and two years and three years, respectively, if we look back on the progress of the company. The irony in that is that the stock price has moved in the opposite direction. In the face of my um, my assessment of Hylion is that their value and their progress has materially increased, and it has increased exponentially along all of these positive fronts that they have. And there are many. The Carno announcement, the Hypertruck Innovation Council, the order book that has been garnered thus far, the applicability to these incentives that I talk about, the mandates that are being placed on both the OEMs and the fleets, which it isn't talked about in any of the bullish or bearish thesis on uh, Hylion. Most of the time, I think it's just a convenient scathe or a convenient um, angle to play when explaining why Hylion won't make it. And those always stick out to me as being somewhat suspect and that what what is the point to that? Is there a, an underlying an objective? And here in 2023, my friends, retail investors have to understand that the game is always being played b below the surface, no matter what. All right. You can circumvent a lot of those games if you can answer a very, very simple question for yourself. Do you want to own the stock or not? Because that in its purest form, no matter if you're a retail investor or an institutional investor, is the same. The stock that you're purchasing, one out of those 180 million in the share float now, those company shares are yours, just like the institution's shares are theirs, okay? Whatever games are being played, whatever short selling is going on, whatever manipulation in the stock, whatever backdoor deals are going on in the stock are all dissolved away in its purest form when you make a stance to say, look, I've got my thesis to the pro and I've got my thesis to the cons over here. And based on my objective research of this opportunity, I want to take a stake in this said opportunity. And I'm not going to promise you that those underlying subcurrents are not going to be going on. I'm not going to promise you that the stock isn't going to be uh, subjected to a short attack like it is now. I'm not going to promise you that the company is going to have delays. I'm not going to promise you that the company is not going to disappoint on this next earnings call. Okay, I'm not going to promise that. But what I will promise you is this. If you own the shares for the long term, you can set yourself in an elite category of long-term investors, not traders, that own this company for all the right reasons and let all of those reasons that are a lot less important to the bottom line conviction that you have on Hylion, those will all dissolve away and you'll be very, very crystal clear, steadfast, and calm in your application in owning this company for the long term. Guys, I appreciate you tuning in. Thank you very much to the shout out, uh, the group for Friday on the live stream, Excalibur, Andrea, Silent Alert. Uh, Kevin uh, joined us as well. Uh, Robert in, uh, was, was on from investing in entrepreneurship. Really appreciate that group. It was a lot of fun. It was suggested that we make that more of a frequent thing. And I'm rolling around with the idea of making sure that I can make that time commitment. We'll probably do it on like a Saturday early in the day. Uh, so the European audience can actually uh, tune in at a at a normal time. I know Andreas was up at like 4 a.m. Uh, over in Europe. So we want to try to accommodate those different time frames. But want to thank the grander highly on community to continue to support this niche message on the channel it's a lot of fun for me we'll continue to do that and we'll continue to share the story and pay it forward for anybody out there that's interested in this niche space as it pertains to this name guys thank you so much for tuning in and uh, subscribe to the channel hit the notification bell leave your comments at the bottom of the video and as always good luck in your investment future